Hey everyone, thank you for coming back and joining me for this special edition, even possibly what we could call an exclusive, and we have a very familiar face on the channel here. You may recognise her from her great videos on Mother and Refuge of the End Times channel. I've also spoken with her once already on that channel recently, and now she's here on their channel, my channel, I should say, but you're all part of the community, as you know. It is the one and only Monique. How are you, Monique? Thank you for coming on. How are you? Good. Thank you so much, Mark. I'm so honoured. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, the honour is all mine. Uh, I'm so humbled and uh, quite excited in a way to see what might come of this special announcement that you have for us because it's a, a message that's coming from an unknown source who remains who wishes to remain anonymous for now at least but it's also been vetted from quite reliable sources beforehand but before we get into that and a few other links to Lithde Maria and Father Jim Blunt uh, all kind of coming around the same thing here why don't you start us off with a little prayer if you don't mind Yes, of course I will. Thank you so much. Can we, shall shall I start with like Father Michel Rodrigue a little bit? Yeah, you do what you want. That's fine. All right. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Lord, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we ask you to pre please seal us in your most precious blood. Seal all of us present in this during this broadcast our families all our viewers all those listening to this broadcast we ask you to place your precious blood before our lips that all that we say and and hear and do will all be in your will that no evil may come through us or against us and um, we ask you to protect us and to take this message into hearts to open hearts to receive it and to prepare for whatever may come ave maria gratia plena dominus tecum benedicta tu in mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui jesus santa maria mater dei ora pro nobis peccatoribus nunc et in hora mortis nostre amen Amen. Amen. Thanks, Monique. So, yes, you want to tell the viewers then what's been happening, first of all, why you're on tonight with a special message from, seems to be a reliable source at least, although they remain anonymous. Yes. I'll call her a privileged soul for now. Um, she's brand new at this. She's been receiving messages for a little over a year. She's Colombian and she's in Canada. She has a young family which she would like to protect, which is with all the persecution that's been going on against mystics and whatnot, she's afraid for her children. Well, she's not, not afraid, I shouldn't say afraid, but she wants to protect her children. Um, and um, but she's, a, she's a very sweet lady. I, I asked Xavier because Xavier is a, he worked with Monseigneur Laurentin. And so he knows what to ask to vet someone. And so I asked him to, to meet her with me on Zoom to ask a few questions. And it was a nice meeting. She was, she's really humble and very sweet and very surrendered to God. I think my, the, what struck me the most was how at peace she is. She receives messages that are pretty strong. Um, now, she, they were all private messages until this one. So she never really needed to get them vetted. She kept it to herself, and that was that. But then with this one, God the Father asked her to make it public. And so this is all new to her. She's she's a real newbie. <laughs> so she, but she is she belongs to uh, several prayer groups and adoration groups, some of which are hosted by Don Antonio Yagüe. I don't know him personally, but apparently he's like a, I would say a Spanish version of Xavier Eral. You know, he's a Marian expert from Spain who's well-renowned. He's written all kinds of books on Garabandal. And uh, I think you're familiar with him. Um, with He he studies biblical astronomy. He, he says that um, 
Well, he studies how the pattern of the stars and the planets on certain very crucial moments in, in biblical history. For example, when our Lord was born and during his crucifixion, the planets or the stars lined up that same exact way. Well, it turns out that this pattern is, is now happening now. It's, it's back. And so something, it sounds like something could happen, something important, mm -hmm. whether it be this week, next week, we don't know, but things are lining up. And so she, so she is part of his prayer groups. And when she received this message, the first thing she did was to take it to her confessor and to take it to him, uh, Antonio Yagüe. And Antonio took it to seven um, other Marian experts and they debated about it. They deliberated for some time and they eventually decided to go to the biggest Spanish Catholic channel there is, Mundo Católico. And he did a show on the whole thing with Israel and Iran. And he mentioned her there. He, he talked about the message there. And he made the link with the what's happening in, 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 the, in the sky and all that. He's far more well-versed in all these things than I am. I can just relay the message. But um, it's interesting to see that uh, this group of seven, by the way, included three priests, Marian experts. And, and then there's her priest as well. So four priests have seen this and vetted it. And so here we are. And it, it made me think, well, and not just that. I, One of our viewers, I was telling you earlier, one of our viewers, um, as it turns out, has been getting small, short messages in adoration. And the day before this, my miss, I'll call her my mystic, the day before my mystic came up with her, well, received her message, our viewer received the message um, that something was going to come down from the sky. And, and just before that, she had the message, where are you, Jonah? And I don't know if you're aware, but on our net, on, on our channel, I've been trying to push the idea of reparation between uh, Easter and Pentecost. And with the solar eclipse, the Nineveh thing, all that, it seems pretty clear that we need to repent. And so I've been trying to, I, we have a 24 hour prayer room where I put in all kinds of re reparation prayers in there to try to hopefully get a movement going of reparation around the world that we may put our own put on our own sackcloths you know like in Nineveh and 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 repent and maybe the Lord will hear and 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 maybe we can mitigate all this so anyway so she talked about it this message about something coming from the sky and then Luz de Maria's last message on April 11th actually that was about I think that was the same day actually um she, her message was pretty strong as well. Um, do you want me to, to read it to you? Yeah, we'll start with Luz de Maria first and we'll save this new one afterwards. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, let's go for it. So on April 11th, yeah, I believe that was the same day. On April 11th, our Lord said to Luz de Maria, my beloved children, I love you, my children. I love you. Beloved, receive my blessing. My mercy is open for all of you. I have opened my mercy. Come and taste this source of love and forgiveness. And he goes on about his mercy. He says, I, I offer you my hands. I offer you my feet. I offer you my wounded side. My love calls you children. My love shows you the need to unite with me in order to save your soul. Increase your faith. Drink from my love and thereby nourish your faith. It is important for your faith to be firm and strong so that you can continue to endure whatever the elements, whatever the elements and human beings will bring to humanity. My beloved, the elements continue to scourge the whole of humanity as a purification for the human race. Natural phenomena will not cease, but will rather increase strongly in the face of human folly. My children, without confusing the fact that my mercy is open to each one of you with the idea that humanity's purification has been halted, continue with the process of conversion, being faithful at all times without faltering. 
The water of the seas is dangerous at this time, as there will be large earthquakes in the sea, and waves will penetrate the land with force and great size. Now that is something that happens when the magnetic, when geomagnetic disturbances occur because of the sun. So human beings are inclined towards hatred and in their desire for revenge, they will directly start keeping all of humanity in suspense. Weapons of which the vast majority of nations are not yet aware and which a nation in the East has secretly created will emerge from one moment to the next with their destructive power affecting nations that possess nuclear weapons. So, I don't know, a weapon that will impact other no nuclear weapons? I don't know. From like the have anything more powerful? Mm -hmm. Or that could switch them off? Or that could, I don't know. That could Maybe disrupt them. Or something, yeah. My children without ceasing to be astonished at the use of human intelligence to cause great tragedy for humanity, each nation will bring the abuse of wrongly, wrongfully employed technology to its greatest expression. The history of this generation is, dis is deplorable. It's, hard, it's hardness of heart beyond compare. I call you to be love and instead you continually scourge me. You do not wish to be fraternal but only to demonstrate power in order to defeat your brother. And if it is necessary to kill him, you will do so. Resentment is a bad advisor. It blinds you, it completely clouds your thinking. And in these conditions, human beings lack love and respect towards their brothers and sisters. They are prey to greed and disrespect towards their fellow men. I do not live in human beings with hearts of stone. What they have is a thin veneer of my love, my laws, which they disrespect, and of my commandments, which they will not obey. This attitude is not worthy of those who call themselves my children. I come with my justice, which does not cease to include my mercy. Otherwise, you deserve so much punishment that I ought to accelerate every event, every revelation. Pray, my children. Pray a yellow dust is the, the lethal weapon possessed by a great nation. Spilling it on the battlefield will cause an abundance of deaths. This is interesting because Aloysius Irmeyer, a German uh, mystic from the early 20th century, had the same vision. He saw it across Europe, a yellow powder spreading in the atmosphere. And I, I don't know if it has anything to do with what Bill Gates is doing with the sun and the particulates in the air. I don't know if it's related to that or if it's some, literally some weapon. You know. Maybe in a chemical warfare or something like that as yeah. well. But the reason you're you're reading Luth de Maria first uh, is because I think you highlighted there it's possibly the same day that this unknown mystic that you're aware of had a similar message that kind of fits with it. Uh, do you want to just quickly read that and then we can maybe critique it and break it down a little bit for people? Would that be right? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, but in Luz de Maria's message, she says also, pray my children, pray the sun's action will prevent agriculture from supplying my children. Right, okay. Okay, so now, okay. That's this kind of talking famine style of the crops and the harvest that aren't coming through. Yes. Yeah. So, on, ah, no, sorry, it was April 15th, not April 11th. Uh, so, four days later, that this mystic received the message. And it was from God the Father. And it said, This is a message for all humankind. Samples of my celestial power will be seen a week from today. Panic will take over you, but I want you to know that I will be there to shelter you in my lap if you look for me. Don't get disturbed. Just look inside you for calmness and silence. You will find me there. Fire, fi sorry, fire particles will come off the sun and will reach the earth in great numbers. 
This will cause a more than normal warming and the weather will be affected. Stay in your houses. Don't run outside. Keep blessed candles and enough water. This phenomenon will last three days. These are the days announced by me. I am intervening in light of so much evil, so much hatred and thirst for power on earth, my creation. God the Father. And just prior to that, two days before, she had been given the reading by Joshua uh, chapter 10, verses 12 to 14, which says, On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and you, moon, over the valley of Aijalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, till the nation avenged itself on its enemies, as it is written in the book of Jeshar. And that means the book of the righteous. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. So there it is. Well, I'm sure everyone will have their own kind of comments when they, they listen to this, and we could put the text in the description box as well. When I first got the message of this unknown seer that you're aware of, Monique, when I first saw Blessed Candles, and this would last three days, the first thing you think of is the three days of darkness, which is well documented in several apparitions and prophecies over the years. But that's not what this is, obviously, because it doesn't fit the timeline. Um, but the fact that it's samples. Now, the, the word I've used since the lockdown era is uh, precursors. There were so many precursors to prophecies that we know are coming from Fatima to Garabandal and others. So when it speaks like that, I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's a precursor then. Maybe it's... Uh, we, we will see a meter of shower. Maybe we will see the northern lights in a way that Europe saw it as predicted from Our Lady at Fatima. Lucia says it'd be a strange light in the sky and it would be a sign that the world was about to be punished. And of course that happened just before Hitler invaded Europe. Um, so we know there's a new $60 billion aid fund given to Ukraine uh, because of the war with Russia. We see Israel and Iran just for the past week or so, straight after all the talk about the eclipse. So let's hope it's not eclipse fever because yet again, further signs in the sky. The Lord does speak to us through his creation. There's no doubt about that. And there, the word of God, Joshua chapter 10, verses 12 through 14, is one of many examples in the Holy Bible where the Lord does use creation, including the signs in the sky and the heavens. So, but I like the fact that it's say, he's speaking as the Father. Don't get disturbed. Just look inside. You're calm and silence. And right now, coming back from pilgrimage and reading a good spiritual book that's all about that interior castle, centuries of Avila, that interior dwelling of the Lord, where this is the place we should look more. He's telling us that's where we need to look. But I did have a... I wasn't sure, you know, we're taking... I wouldn't say we're taking a risk, and I don't feel I'm taking a risk by having this on the channel. It's not something I normally do. I haven't even done videos on Luthi Maria or even Father Jim Blunt, I think, is another one. It kind of collaborates with the timing of the messages we might get to. But... Um, for me, it's always the Marian apparitions, especially Fatima, Garabandal, Akita, and Medjugorje. And now I like I love the one with Tre Fontani. I do believe in Our Lady of All Nations. There's other ones you could fit in there, like Marie Julie Jeheni and her mutual friend Xavier just opened everything with his book. So the content that I normally do is there. But I trust yourself and the fact that it's already been vetted with a few priests, Marian and experts and as well as the Spanish man Antonio um, that you were mentioning earlier there, I forget his surname, sorry but I, I am aware of him I've only seen one or two because he usually speaks in Spanish <laughs> I'm not very good with Spanish these days <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean I don't think it's a clear doom and gloom type message 
And it might just be the case to say, well, let's see what happens the coming week or two, because it is a bit of a risk where they're given a time scale on it, and it's a very immediate one, isn't it? It is. It mentions, you know, in the next, uh, a week from now, but a week from now doesn't, I don't know, it It could be Monday, it could be, it could be next week, we don't know. I looked up uh, earthsky.com, I think it is, that the website, to find out about the coronal, what is it called, coronal mass ejections, particles coming from the sun, and... Yep. We just had on Friday, we just had one of these storms, a uh, geomagnetic storm. Nobody knew, noticed it, but the, the radiation in the air was much stronger. Some places experienced um, uh, communications issues. I know that here we had uh, internet issues. And so it's not necessarily going to be something very noticeable, but then again, maybe it will. We don't know. According to this website, a lot more of these are coming. They're expecting a very, a, a much bigger, much more, much stronger one to come. Possibly next week. Not sure, but um, the the thing with those is that there are holes in the atmosphere, and when these storms happen, those solar storms, uh, some rays can come through and under the atmosphere and hit us, and they can be quite severe. There was one that happened. When was it? It was in um, in 1859, the Carrington event, where when it hit, telegraph networks around the globe catastrophically failed. Operators received shocks and telegraph paper caught fire. And this can be serious. And we are a society that depends so much on electricity and on you know technology. We've really shot ourselves in the foot. We are very vulnerable. And that's where our enemy is going to hit, of course. And with these solar storms, that's what it's going to hit as well. It could knock out our power grid for days, weeks, months. It could, well, yeah. With a, with a, apparently with a few days warning, they can protect the grid or turn it off to protect it. But, um, and, and, and I don't know if this is one of these warnings. When I heard this, I thought, you know what? It's best to play it safe and to let everybody know if nothing happens, nothing happens. We haven't lost anything. But if something happens, at least we're prepared. We have a chance to prepare. And in my mind, if I knew something might happen and I didn't say anything and I sat on it and something terrible happens, my conscience would have a problem, you know. But I'm surprised that not more, I'm, I'll be honest, not many platforms have been willing to to uh, to speak about it. Only only you and I. Thank you so much for your courage, and and a, a little Spanish um, channel that Five uh, Ultimas Remedias, I think it's called. And they've also put something out, and of course Mundo Católico that spoke about it. But the others are afraid, are afraid of getting smeared, and it's unfortunate because I think. Every one of these little messages, whether they happen or not, they're little moments of grace. God trying to give us a bit of mercy, a chance to to pray, to repent, to set ourselves, you know, to, to get ready with the Lord and to make things right and to to gain a little grace with our prayers. It's it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing, no matter how it turns out, whether it's true, whether it doesn't happen or whether it happens and we're not aware of it, because with these sun storms, that may happen too, that we it'll happen, but we won't realize the radiation. I know that Luce Maria has spoken about it. She said, um, the sun is sick and it's going to be emitting more and more of these particles that are going to hit us, some very violently and others less, but the radiation damage to our bodies is going to be very bad. It's going to cause a warming of the air and our bodies are not prepared for this kind of warning, and so we need to, to well, we, we, we know what to expect when it does. So it falls in line with all these other messages, really. Yeah, well, I don't find it risky, but... <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't think it's risky in terms of putting something up there and if it doesn't come true. I mean, at the end of the day, we both know from the many topics that we've covered on our own respective, respective channels 
every year people are thinking, oh, it's the Garbendal warning, it's the Garbendal warning, the eclipse, so it might be the Garbendal warning, or this is happening, it might be the Garbendal <laughs> warning. Now, here we are all these years later, and it's like, well, there's still one key factor of Garbendal to happen, which is the Pope going to Moscow, which we thought was almost happening, what didn't we? I still think it could be imminent based on the geopolitical uh, situations where he would go as a peace ambassador because the West want it. This is the, the I think most people who are not tuned into the, the mainstream media know that the monster is the West prodding the bear in the East. And this is this is how it's coming about. And if it's in the timeline um, that we've covered with Xavier, the timeline I put together after interviews with him, bless it, um, Marie Julie Jehenny, the English Queen passing away, the twenty twenty one to twenty twenty four last select. So we're we're expecting these major ones to come. I I'll admit I was a little hesitant, thinking, "Oh, this might just be another charismaniac." And I say that with love because I used to be part of the groups, and as you can see with the drums behind me, I'm no stranger to praise and worship music, just like I'm no stranger to good traditional masses or good liturgy and things. I like to keep that balance where as long as it's the heart for the Lord, I'll go where the door opens. But um, I remember some groups I used to have a knot in my stomach and then introduce something new to a well-established Divine Mercy group, actually, which had the praise and worship and all that once a month. And uh, the three people got up there to prophesy. And they must have came out with over 50 prophecies in 10 minutes. Oh my God. Like, you should be on your knees thanking God they gave you more prophecies than they gave Padre Pio in 50 years. Wow. We have to discern it. I mean, it might be people with good hearts and good intentions, but Xavier also says with Monsignor, uh, you're French, Lauren Pat, yeah, that one. <laughs> I'm like Joey and Friends, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but um, he says, we have the treasure of the deposit of the faith. We are the, the Catholic Church has everything. The scriptures, the tradition, nothing can be added or taken away from the Lord's revelation. So when someone new comes along claiming to have mystical experiences or messages from God or Our Lady, we can go at it full throttle because of what the church has. And it's very quick to to discern it's false. It takes a bit longer to see if it's true. Exactly. And that's why many ones for decades haven't had a negative judgment but they may not have all been accepted so whoever this person is this lady is that you spoke about with this new message coming then it is a case of just well she's wanting it to go out there to the world she might remain anonymous but for the many people who do know her including yourself if nothing comes of this then she left herself herself wide open to have no credit in the future just like any other so at least we're putting out there, and I think your main motivator, I was going to ask you, why were you motivated to do this one? Of all the stuff you cover yourself, you tapped on it, you says it was about your own conscience, in case it comes true. Yeah, my own conscience. Because there is no way of knowing what's true, what's false. But it sounded right. It No, meeting her helped me to see that. I, like, she has nothing to gain, a lot to lose. And if it doesn't happen, she's not even, I asked her that, or Xavier asked her that question. If it doesn't happen, how will that make you feel? And she said, at peace, because she trusts the Lord. And if the Lord gave her that message, if God the Father gave her that message, there's a reason. And he will fulfill it in his way whether it's a way that we understand or not doesn't really matter he put it out there because he wanted to reassure us so she's completely accepting of whether it happens or not it doesn't change a thing for her at all she says she is completely surrendered no matter what happens she didn't quite know how to go about it and um, the lord gave her a few people that he wanted her to go to I happen to be one of them. And I, I, I have to admit, that kind of made me even more 
worried of disappointing the Lord if I didn't do anything, <laughs> you know, but I, uh, I, I don't see the harm of it. I think if anything, only good can come of it. And it works with the news that we see about on earth sky. We're expecting something to come from the sky. And when I got the confirmation from another viewer who had that message and she published it, so, or she put it on her Facebook or what it or, or something. So we had the proof that she did indeed have that message and it all happened at, at the same time. I thought, well, gee, maybe God is trying to send me a sign. You know, we're supposed to read signs. I don't know. It, it could be way off, but if it's not, I'd rather be prepared. That's how I see things. <laughs> Yeah, and you, see, you also believe that it taps into something Father Jim Blunt's also covered recently as well? Yeah, Father Jim Blunt, uh, he, okay, he spoke of three days, or I think, or he saw three blackouts. Three blackouts. Yeah, he said he saw, so he saw Our Lady. She appeared to him from the head to the torso like a giant Our Lady. And she had something in her hands that started to roll out. And it was like a black fabric. And it started circling the earth. And as if there was a blackout. And he saw it for three days. But I think, if I remember correctly, in the explanations, he talked about it possibly being, affecting the grid and it was similar to what the solar the solar uh, storms can do, affecting the power grid, affecting communications. So it could be a blackout like that, or it could actually be three days of darkness too. I don't know, but it's not the three days of darkness. It's something else. And I know that with Marie-Judie Jaini, she also talked about two days of darkness before the three days of darkness. So, and then the scripture passage about holding the sun so the sun so daylight lasted longer to allow israel to destroy utterly destroy the amorites it just seems very prophetic it all comes together somehow i don't know how to interpret it all i don't know if we're totally off but i don't know <laughs> a, a, a prophecy detective i am i don't know but you know it the Lord is giving us signs, that is clear. And it's just a question of figuring out how, what it means. But even if we don't know what it means, at the very least, it should help us to realize we need to prepare our souls for anything. We need to be right with God. We need to be confident in God. You know, I, I'm a very scared person. I'm a little mouse. I get scared at the slightest thing. But one thing I know now is that I'm, I'm, I'm discovering that I have the ability of compartmentalizing things. This is new to me, but something very scary can happen and I can almost shut it down and say, no, I'm a daughter of the most high God and he's got his hand over this and I'm going to be okay. And it's just like, that's it. It's just like a switch. And I think in a way, you know, God in this message is trying to tell us, calm down, don't worry. I've got my hand on you. You're okay. You're going to be fine. I'm with you. And maybe that's how we're going to set the example. We Catholics, the, well, Catholics, those who believe in these prophetic messages that the Lord keeps sending, you know, yes, everything was revealed in the Bible, but he continues to send prophets. He's always spoken through the prophets. Because he's, he said, he, I won't leave you alone. He gave us the Eucharist. And a lot of these people are getting their messages before the Blessed Sacrament, right? And I mean, he continues to speak. He continues to tell us he loves us. We're not alone. He continues to, to warn us about things that are coming. That's not new revelation. That's just God being loving and merciful and taking every opportunity there is to get us to turn back on sin, repent, and come back to him. So I think this is just one more. And yeah, and it's just, good to see it. I think one of the key things people forget uh, that was repeated from Fatima to Garabandal and, and other, where, other places was when 
communism came, when communism returns. And, I mean, looking at the hate crime bill that's just come through in Scotland, I, I think this idiot in Scotland, the First Minister, is the same as that one you have over in Canada. I just saw yesterday, was it, it's going to be in hate crime to preach the Bible in public in Canada. I don't know all the details, but it's it's not good. We won't be, yeah, we can be put in jail for even lifetime for standing by the Bible. I mean. But that's when you realize it's not just anti-Bible, anti-Word of God. Jesus was the Word, is the Word. So you're actually anti-Christ. And I'm starting to get quite blunt to say that. You know, like you can't preach the word of God, you cannot preach Christ, therefore you're anti-Christ. And yeah. I think that's what we're seeing. And this is this is the Marxist communism in a new disguise. And I always give a couple of the same examples out of many things that, are, that come to mind at times. And if you've ever saw the movie Carol, The Man Who Became Pope, the story of John Paul II, great movie. But there's a, a scene where he's running away from the Nazi soldiers when they were occupying Poland. He's into this man's house, talking away, keeping him safe in the meantime because he was out of the curfew or something. And uh, he says, oh, don't worry about them. They'll def evil will devour itself. Like, how can you say We'll defeat them by love, the man said. He's like, how can you say that when they're outside the door? Defeat them by love. They'll get machine guns. He says, because evil will devour itself, that's what it does. And Carol was thinking, and it was like, if we don't defeat it by love, it comes back with a new face. Exactly. And I think what goes around comes around. Something else is going on. And communism wasn't defeated by love. Nazism wasn't defeated by love. And we're seeing that socialism embedded now in certain countries, Western countries. And now it's a hairline away from clear out Marxist communism although it'll never be called that it'll still be called democracy <laughs> but when you start to see the fact that you cannot have the word of God preached in public you know that's very anti-Christ anti-Christian for sure and uh, we know these things are coming because, and I, I think for me it's the, the real sense of that manifestation of evil knowing it's time is running short before our lady steps in and kicks his head in, literally, <laughs> stamping on the, the serpent, you know. But um, that's where we, we follow the messages, which convey with what we follow in the gospel and the true te teachings of the, the Catholic Church, because we have to have deep foundations to weather the storms. Otherwise, we're blown away. And that deep foundation, those deep roots or what's going to help us take it on, even if it means martyrdom. And a lot of people don't speak about that. Even Padre Pio is apparently on record saying it's the European martyrs that will pay for the great miracle of Garib and Dal. But no one wants to hear that. You know, it's doom and gloom. It's like, well, it's not being pessimistic. It's being realistic, if it's the case. Are you going to say anything for a loaf of bread if we're in a famine? Are you going to go into quietism because you might offend someone in the public square when you preach the word of God or say, oh, God bless, thank you. Oh, you said something bad there. You said God bless. You know, where, where's it coming to? We've already saw the past 20 years, at least in the UK, where crucifixes are taken out of classrooms and hospitals, the Bible's taken out, they no longer get the Gideon Bible anywhere. And it's like, like a, a bit man. after that. Yeah, it's all gone. I mean, Catholic churches, uh, Catholic schools in Scotland and in England might still have that. But otherwise, publicly, it's gone. We're getting marginalised to our own. But it's coming to the point, well, how are we allowed to be in the public square if everything that we believe in our faith, you look at it as hate crime? Well, so, you know, this is where he sends communism and God's ready to take action. That's the point. But we know it's coming. We've been waiting. We know the devil is on his last legs. He has to do anything he can right now. All the demons are unleashed on earth. And, you know, why Why are these Bibles being taken away? Why can we no longer speak of it? Why are we taking away religion? Because the devil doesn't want us to know that God loves us. And if we knew just how much God loves us, I mean, 
truly loves us, we wouldn't be scared. We wouldn't be worried. We wouldn't, we would die as a martyr in a second to meet him. And then if we understood how merciful God is, you know, it's like, I can't remember if it was to Father Jim Lau that he said this or to one of the visionaries. He said, when we'll be, when we'll be martyred, we will go into ecstasy first and we'll be, we'll be in heaven before we die. I so, mean, that's mercy. You know, and when you think about it, apparently uh, Joan of Arc, that's what happened to her. St. Lawrence, that's what happened to him. I mean, so, wow, okay. So martyrdom is not necessarily going to be as terrible as we think. But if we love God, we would do anything for him. And the great saints have said, you know, they would take, they would take any torture on earth rather than spend a day in purgatory. Or an hour. It was an hour in purgatory. That's how awful purgatory is. That that yearning for God that is so that burns, you know. And no, what if we understood? And this is the thing: we don't know our faith. If we understood our faith, if we understood how God redeemed suffering, the redeeming power of suffering. We wouldn't be looking for the latest, the, 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 for an Advil with every little, little, you know, with every headache and every, we'd be offering that up to God, every little minute thing that we could, we would offer it up. Just like St. Therese was taught the little way, you know, all this suffering, it prepares us for something bigger. I tell my kids a lot, you know, I, I, I know that they're going to see what's going to come. I'm, I'm convinced of it. And so I've been reading the stories of the saints and the martyrs to them. I've been reading to them about the martyrs of Compiègne, the nuns that marched to, that were taken to the, um, the guillotine. And they were singing the Gloria on their way to the, glari- the, gu- gu- the guillotine. Father Michel talks about it. He says, you know, when we'll be martyred, we, we, you know, we should be singing, the, you know, the, the, what the angels sang at, at Christmas, you know, the Gloria. He says, that's how we should go. We, you know, enjoy and, or like uh, Father Miguel Pro, you know, opening his arms before the as he was being shot to death, you know, and there's yeah. joy in but, serving the Lord and loving the Lord. So that's why they're taking the Bibles out. That's why we're not allowed to speak. We're not allowed to understand that we have a heavenly Father and a blessed Mother in heaven who love us. That Jesus died for us for Pete's sake. He gave us, he opens, he opened his arms for us, you know, and he he taught us the value of suffering. And I'm hoping that we Catholics will somehow set an example for the world when all these things come down. That we'll be able to take it with a sense of joy and confidence because and trust because we know the immaculate heart of the triumph of the immaculate heart is around the corner we know that god is in control jesus is in the boat as mark mallard said you know we that we'll be able to to not be panicked and it's funny because i may very well panic i i'm the type to panic but i'm learning i think i can compartmentalize this and say no Stop all the fear. The fear is not from God. He's in control. And we've got this. And because we need to be able to not just be controlling our own fears, but we have to be there for the others who know nothing about this. So few of us know about this. So we, God wants to prepare us to help them deal with it too. And so we have to set that example. We have to be strong in our faith. We have to get as many communions and confessions as we can get in before the abomination of desolation comes in on our altars. We need the graces to get through this. Yeah. So we need to be strong and to be joyful, to have a smile on our face, like Mother Teresa said, you know, and. You can only have that and you can only go the way those other martyrs went, like you mentioned, when, it really is in the heart. And how do we get it in the heart? Our Lady's been telling us repeatedly, year after year, decade after decade, for at least over a century of the major times that she's appeared. Pray, 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 fasting, confession at least once a month, reading the scriptures, 
ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ, St. Jerome said, you know, in uh, conversion and peace, all these words, read in spiritual books, like you were saying about the redemptive, redemptive suffering that we can offer, even in this Carmelite book, Fire Within, which I'm, this is my current reading just now, you know, it says through your suffering and all that we do, we are co-redeemers, co-redeemers. Yes. Exactly. This, this is phenomenal stuff. <laughs> it's phenomenal. If we understood the value of suffering, what do we do today? We take any opportunity to deflect it. <laughs> An aspirin for a headache or something else, make it go away. And yeah. And you know, God has given us literally everything to go straight to heaven when we die. We're the ones who keep deflecting it. You know, if we had offered every one of those little sufferings, every work that we do, every unpleasant thing, unpleasant word we get, if we had just offered it up, we'd be going straight to heaven. Yeah, for sure. If it's the grace to happen, and I don't want, I mean, my confirmation name is uh, after St. Peter. And um, when you get to read Peter more and more in his his manly way but yet he always seemed to fall short didn't he and I can relate to him in so many ways as a human as a man and but the one thing I always pray is Lord please 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 never allow me to deny you <laughs> you know give me the grace to the the virtue of courage the, the fortitude you know the grace to accept whatever it is including martyrdom if it has to be not praying for it but I'm praying to to pass the test, if that's what it is. Because like you say, it's preparing for glory and it's straight to heaven if you die for the Lord. You the know? highest levels in heaven. But that, that reminds us actually, how many times are we hearing it from famous priests on YouTube, even Father Chad Ripperger to others who I love listening to? Nothing to do with this context and what they're talking about. But they look at it from their own perspectives and their ministries. But they're all saying the same thing repeatedly quite recently. Mm -hmm. Saints of yesteryears wish they were living now so that for where we're living because what they saw it was coming. This is the times they wish they were living for all that God's going to do, for all the graces that are available like never before. We are the generation and the generations after us going through all this that are going to get to those higher levels of heaven if we accept. In Medjugorje a few years ago, the way they described the word, when they, it was like the message was about the father coming home and emptying all the gifts on the table for his children. But the word that was used, it was like he was shaking it, making sure it was all out. That was the key word in the Croatian. He was shaking it. He wants to give us everything. You know, the saints saw it from years gone by, decades, centuries ago. They saw these times and they wished they were alive for you it. They did. They were alive for you, it. Yeah. We are a privileged generation and we don't know it. But it's going to come through suffering. And so we have to prepare for that. We don't suffer here. <laughs> you know, our, our parents, our grandparents suffered. Our great, great grandparents suffered. We don't know suffering. It's going to be a shock, but we have to prepare for that. But if we understand how great that suffering is and what it's going to do, my goodness, it's powerful. And Jesus has said that the greatest saints are going to come in the end times and the greatest miracles are going to come in the end times. I mean, even Father Michel has witnessed it. My mother witnessed it in Belgium during the war. I mean, cupboards being replenished, uh, you know, Things like that are going to become regular miracles. We're going to see incredible things, but we have to have faith. Yeah. So I think all that we're seeing now is a preparation to learn. It's the school of trust, the school of surrender. Because when we're going to be at the toughest po point, if we're not surrendered, we won't make it. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn to surrender now for the little things, or we won't be able to make it for the big ones. Daily commitment, daily prayers, holy rosary always. Holy rosary always. Love the messages. Yeah, I mean, I know there's a lot of a sandwich deal mix in there after reading the messages. 
and um, thinking, oh, what's coming? But I, I never get a sense of fear anymore about it all. And please, God, that's because of the graces. I just, I keep praying that. I just want your will to be done in my life, in me, through me, for me, by me, whatever. <laughs> and I'm yours. And um, it didn't come easy. Like you say, there's that point of trust. But the more we have fear, it represents the fact that we don't have enough trust in the Lord. And we are his children. We call him Father. He willed that. He made that happen through his own suffering, as we saw in the person of uh, the God-man, Jesus. He came lowering himself from his throne, from his and never counted his divinity amongst us. He became the servant. It's in Paul writes in his letter, taking on human form, being found as the, a servant or a slave even. And yet there he went to the cross for us. We don't want to be inconvenienced with anything. But I think the more we are, and that's what this one is when it comes to levels of prayer and getting deeper into prayer. If you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, you can never get too deep. And people say, oh, you're getting a bit too deep into all that religion. Swim in the bottom of the ocean and then dig the ocean bed for more. Keep going deep, deep, deep. That's where he wants to take you. You know, so... um. It is great time. This is the time of grace. And if these little signs do come about and whatever else, I think I, for me it's just confirmation. Not just for this message, but I mean, for me, I, after seminary was a hard time for me a few years after it, but then the lockdowns kicked in. And that then the next thing, then the next thing is like, come on, Mark, pull your socks up, back to basics. Everything you have up here in knowledge is starting to unravel so much quicker. I can see the precursors. I can see other things. And it's like, come on, back back in gear, back to basics. And since then, 2020, right through to now, you're just going to keep seeing this unravel domino effect quicker and quicker. Well, now it's not going to get any better. Now we know it's only going to get worse. We know that. But we also know how it ends. So we know it. We just have to get through that and then we'll be fine <laughs> and a bone. Think, it's a bones all the more <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i think also that you know when when we are afraid maybe we should take that as a sign that we need to work on ourselves i mean we have we we have to unburden ourselves of sin if we are if we are free of free from sin there's no reason to have fear so that might be a cue that we need confession and we need to dig deep. Father Michel said, you know, we should do a life confession. I don't have much memory. I can't remember far back, but I, I try. Every time I go to confession, I try to think of, of adding things from the past, you know, and we have to unburden ourselves. And once we're unburdened, I think it's, it becomes easier to surrender. I know the prayers of St. Bridget of Sweden promise the lifetime examination of conscience for your, your conversion towards the end. Maybe Our Lady of Sorrows type devotion. I don't know if it's one of the promises as well with the rosary, but that's a commitment in itself. But living good lives, keeping the sacramental life, loving the good life, keep away from grave sin. And but I think... Devotion, by the way, when you mentioned devotions... I'm learning that the Holy Face devotion and the Precious Wounds devotions are extremely powerful. The promises, oh my goodness. I mean, God will rewrite our souls. He will indelibly place his image on our souls. Can you imagine that with the Holy Face? That means that our sins will be, he said, our our, our venial sins will be eliminated and our mortal sins will be forgotten. Wow, you know, so... And again, we did the Divine Mercy Feast Day recently as well, just before the eclipse. Get yourself every year that we can. Get the clean out. You know, everything's available to us. You cannot say he never gave us everything. No, and see, all this is is beside the Bible. Like, people say, oh, I don't believe in that because, you know, it's not in everything. Was, well, all we need is the Bible. Well... Yeah, but you miss out on all the goodies that God has for us. All these extra graces he wants to give us to strengthen us for the battle. I mean, why would you want to go without that? You know, it's, mm -hmm. I don't know. 
But if they're blind now, we pray for them now. And hopefully they'll wake up before the warning. So they'll have an easier warning. <laughs> you know, and... No, we're covering good stuff, Monique, and, and that's for everyone to hear as well as the fact that there are there is passion in those who love the Lord. There's, I can sense the passion in you. It brings it out in me a little bit while we're trying to do this recording. But at the same time, we know other things are coming. It's like, so what? If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. My focus is on God. I love the Lord. I, I've got the interior joy, the interior peace, more, more, more. And with a good spiritual director, we go along the way, just like this wise priest is writing about in this one book as an example. Um, but yeah, let's see how the next week or two pans out. Let's see how the following months pans out, because I think more than ever, it's not just about the videos, it's about the personal conversion, the personal journey for every single individual. Just keep praying, keep fasting, doing your little daily self-denials, Everything you can, just be in love and be sorted with God, and He'll certainly uh, show you generosity more than you could ever give. And one of maybe to finish, uh, quote if you have your last final words, Monique. But I would just say to anyone, one of the favorite lines of scripture for me is, uh, "No, no one has seen, no one has heard, nor has it entered their imagination of what God has in store." For those who love him. Oh, you know, love her. <laughs> he will not be outdone in generosity. <laughs> that's for sure. I, well, to bring it back to the message that we had today, I it dawned on me that, you know, the Jews, when Jesus came, the Jews didn't accept him because they were expecting a, gr a, a great military savior grander a king on a throne with servants they expected great things in human terms god is humble and sometimes i wonder if when when these messages come out we too expect grand things to happen and sometimes god gives them to us but they they they're, he fulfills them but in little ways that we don't always see so i think we just need to be grateful accept all these things as grace to bring us closer to him to come back to his lap you know <laughs> and just let him love us and just surrender to him and realize he's got us in the palm of his hand we're okay we'll be fine whether alive or dead it doesn't matter we're fine we're with him so, yeah. amen Monique, it's been an absolute pleasure, and please don't be a stranger to the channel. We hope to have you back again soon, giving us more of your insights and your words of encouragement. And for everyone else watching the video, please do what you do best. Thumbs up, share, subscribe. Let's get many souls as possible uh, back into the fold, and that's your part to really help spread any good message, any words any signs that may be coming that might serve one day's confirmation just might click for some person, that one soul. Let's go out there like the Good Shepherd, whose feast day it is today, the day of the Good Shepherd, and find that one lost sheep. And until then, take care. God bless.